Welcome back to the Arabian Business SME Forum. Now, one of the skills necessary to succeed in business is to be able to take a complex problem and simplify it down to find a solution. I'm delighted now to be joined in our virtual fireside discussion by a professional who lives and breathes that ethos. Virginia Reinecker is Head of Commercial Products for MasterCard Middle East and Africa. Virginia, welcome to the forum. Thank you, Scott. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, it is fair to say that 2020 has been a very complex year. So let's begin with how is MasterCard, how has your organization been helping businesses and SMEs deal with the adversities of 2020 and become more resilient businesses? Yeah, sure. And I mean, the impact we've seen on small businesses globally due to the the crisis has been a bit of a wake up call, I would say, for all of us. Um, in all markets, all regions, SMEs are suffering. And when they suffer, we all suffer. Uh, and the reason is, you know, when you look at the Arab world alone, SMEs represent 96% of the registered companies. And so they really do provide livelihoods for many of us. Um, they're employing half the workforce, uh, according to the IMF. And so we really need them to survive. Um, and we need to as an organization solve for many areas that they have been set back. Um, you know, when we when we meet with them, they're making important decisions and changes in their daily operations, uh, things they hadn't had to consider previously. There's a greater need for, for data um, and analytics and an understanding of their business. Uh, so an example of this could be you know, just understanding how to reach their customers and who are their customers and, and how do they reach them now in a new way, uh, remotely almost. So SMEs don't necessarily have visibility of, of that uh, about their business. Uh, and what is further heightened as well during this crisis is the, uh, the lack of access to finance. Uh, we are actually one of the lowest regions in the world for providing finance to SMEs. Um, it's sitting at somewhere like a rate of 7% of total bank lending. And so, you know, if you imagine a world without businesses, um, you know, that's, that's a risk for all of us. We need to help them to keep paying their staff. Uh, we need to help them pivot their business models and, sure, and ensure that they can reach their customers remotely. And so at MasterCard, we've committed to, to leveraging existing technology, uh, our existing network and our insights from our data, and working with our partners in the region, the, the banks and the governments, to ensure we can help inform and enable small businesses to survive and sustain themselves. And we're elevating the way we're supporting. Uh, globally, we've made a commitment of uh, $250 million dollars for the next five years that we will put toward investing in financial technology uh, and product um, and ensure they can stay open and, and keep employing their staff. Uh, and we are tracking this. We have uh, a target to bring one billion people into the digital economy. And uh, we now um, specifically call out that 50 million of those will be small businesses and a half of that will be from the uh, women entrepreneur base. Uh, it's a really interesting read if you get hold of it, it's the, the MasterCard Index for Women Entrepreneurs, which actually tracks the progress of women-owned and led businesses and shows just how, um, you know, how important they are as a catalyst for economic growth. So focus, we will be focusing on all these spaces. Uh, just come back onto that for a second, because we were hearing this morning in, a, in another panel session that we're here within the UAE, actually SMEs were 99% of the economy, and they were very much the engine of this uh, economy and will be the engine driving growth next year in the post-COVID landscape, hopefully. But then you talk about 7% of financing. That feels like there's a, there's a disconnect there that, that, we, that we need to address. Yeah, that absolutely is. I mean, it's um, it can come in many forms and challenges that, you know, depending on the size of the business, uh, how long they've been in business, how good their track record is from a sales perspective, they may not necessarily have the financial history um, or have the paperwork that allows the formal banking environment to extend lending to them. Um, and this is a problem. 
So, uh, you know, of the 99% or 96% of SMEs that exist in the region, it's, uh, quite a chunk of these are, are micro SMEs, as, mm. as we term them, uh, which means they're sort of employing below five um, staff members, um, and it means they may not be the sizable business that, that necessarily meets the requirements when it comes to traditional lending. Um, so there's a lot of action in this space with um, sort of uh, sort of secondary lenders um, and, and some of the new fintechs that are coming on board to try and look at an SME's business in a different way and take more information about how they behave um, in order to, to start bridging that financing gap. But it is it is a big concern. You talked about a wake-up call and 2020 being a wake-up call. Um, I, I think all of us, and we're doing this as a virtual fireside chat, the adoption of technology and the kind of the embracing of technology in our lives has been, you know, accelerated greatly in 2020. How crucial is it now for SMEs to transition towards their digital future? If they're not there already, mm-hmm. they need to be on the path. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's critical. If Today we still have changing behaviours carrying through. So social distancing recommendations, um, governments still insisting of safety precautions and encouraging, you know, they are encouraging now the use of contactless payments um, and, and other ways of, of being able to bank, you know, digitally, uh, not having to rely on on physical stores and, and, and banks being open. And so there is a real shift from in-person to online payments and from cash to contactless. Mm. Um, now, these are big trends that we were, you know, these were trends we were, we've were we been highlighting for a long time, but they have been accelerated as a result of consumers now wanting touchless experiences um, and, and not wanting to leave the safety of their home. So, uh, it really leaves businesses no option if they want to remain open. Um, but the good news is the technology has always been there. Uh, it is now about formulating a plan for how to adopt these technologies. Um, we certainly partner with all of the major financial institutions in the region to ensure that that they have these technologies available um, and that they can offer more wide variety of solutions to customers to meet them for how they need to transact um, themselves as a business or with their their customers. Some are only going to be able to rely on the physical doors um, kind of business model. Um, Others we can help support to move to a a digital doors type of business. Um, And so we want to try and help connect them with as many technologies and products to make their online presence there uh, and to help them to, to accept these payments safely and securely. Now, talking to business leaders, uh, we hear particularly with the hope of a vaccine that you, know, you were talking there about bricks and mortar. So the bricks and mortar commerce, shall we say, will always be there. This is what business leaders are telling us. But the, the genie is very much now out of the bottle, isn't it, as far as e-commerce is concerned. Do you see us slipping back into our old behavior patterns as far as, um, you know, bricks and mortar and retail and commerce? Or is that that digital component now very much here to stay and the future? Look, I think um, we are uh, we are going to see a, a bigger adoption for sure. I mean, I think human nature is we 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 may shift back to old ways, but uh, if you just look at contactless, so you know, taking your card out of your wallet and tapping it, or using your phone and tapping it rather than exchanging with with the the attendant. Uh, there's been a marked increase in contactless, over over 40% growth um, in the region on those transactions. And um, we actually wanted to get closer to understanding, is this a behaviour that's likely to carry on uh, and sustain? Um, and so we have, we've gone out uh, and conducted surveys with consumers and about 83% in the UAE are saying this is the way they will transact going forward. Uh, so maybe it's just open their eyes, I guess, to to the fact that these methods are available um, and they're convenient. You know, it's, I think we we will all appreciate if we've transacted in this way. It's faster, it's safer, it's, you know, um, it's simpler. So I think we will see an adoption carry on. 
So that's the customer view of technology. Um, from a business view of technology, how important is technology in nurturing innovation in business? Yeah, I think it. I think it's uh, it's it's very crucial. I mean, SMEs need the tools and resources to survive. Um, so if you think about uh, a lot of SME businesses today, they 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 tend to have kind of manual operations in the way they run their business, whether that's manual from a from a collecting of payments from their customers, mm. which results in them. Uh, waiting for payment and and you know having cash flow issues because they haven't been able to to their customers on the spot in order to collect those those funds um, through to how they manage their their bookkeeping uh, and, and um, sort of forecasting of cash reserves. So the more manual these processes are, uh, the more difficult difficulty we see in the small business both from a time perspective, like the amount of time they need to invest in, in managing that part of uh, operating the operation of the business versus, you know, selling more or, or growing the business in other ways, um, to also, you know, having inability of, of uh, visibility of cash flow. So how do they know they have outstanding payments? How do they know that they can afford to buy more goods, to sell more goods? So uh, without a doubt, um, we need to help them get there. Uh, and let me give you a few examples of, of some um, solutions that could do this. And recently with RackBank in the UAE, we have helped them launch a product that they're calling uh, Simplify Commerce. Um, and what it actually does is allow the SME to very quickly get online uh, with an online store and start to um, you know, distribute their products to their, their customers through digital channels. So it could be WhatsApp, it could be Facebook, really simple methods, um, and start to accept payment through these channels as well. Um, and this enables them to reach more consumers. They're doing it digitally. They, they can also even extend into other markets outside of their home market and, and promote themselves. Um, and then we think about sort of the, the data that SMEs might be sitting on and how do we help them make that digestible and actionable because if it's not in a format that's helpful um, th th then they won't be able to do anything with it. Uh, we have also a similar product just launched in the UAE called what we call local market intelligence and what this enables the business to look at is to almost to benchmark themselves. So if I'm a retailer in a certain perimeter of, of Dubai I can assess am I situated next to other retailers? Are they doing better than me or worse than me? Uh, are we having foot traffic come through this area? So really some, some predictions around how their customer flow is happening, um, which can help them figure out, you know, from a business model perspective, are they in the right place? Um, do they need to think about going online? How do they reach customers through new ways? Um, but all of the technology that is out there, I think it it has to come with some level of training and education for these businesses. Mm. All the feedback we've received is to say, you know, I've never had to deal with digital payments before. I don't know what QR codes are. I'm, you know, some of these concepts are, are fairly new to a lot of businesses. And so um, we, we put a lot of effort and time around how do we train and educate them, not in the use of the product, but in, you know, what is what does digital, um, you know, what does going digital mean? How can we help them understand um, how to how to work with these tools? Maybe how to market their business better through the use of these tools. Um, and we have very successful tie-ups that we do with organisations that are expert in the training side of things. Micro Mentor is one um, organisation that we deal with that has been running a program for us in Jordan um, in relation to these topics. I mean, it's funny because if we were talking about this a year ago, perhaps people tuning in would have been going, wow, that sounds, that sounds really advanced, that sounds really cutting edge, um, and, and I'm not sure I even need that in my life right now. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a year, like coronavirus, as difficult uh, as it has been, it's provided a real learning moment for SMEs, hasn't it? It's forced them down a road where they have to look at this sort of thing. Now, if I'm, a, if I'm an SME business today that's looking and listening to you, Virginia, and going, crikey, I actually do need to get on board this train, what would you say the first step for them is? Um, is, it, is it reach out? 
Yeah, I think it is. Um, so we have the we have a, a program at Mastercard which we call Digital Acceleration, and it, it like you say, Scott, it was all these products have been there. I think they they were probably a little bit new age previously, but now they they're very relevant. And how do I determine? from knowing my business to knowing where I need to take my business, how do I determine the right fit for me? Um, and so uh, one way that we are, are looking to solve this is to bring to the banks almost like a, uh, a, a digital or a diagnostic assessment. So mm. if an SME can answer sort of five or six basic questions about how they run their business, together with the banks, we should be able to then point them to the right product and solution, which could be a simple a point of sale system. It could be helping them sell online through social media channels. But if they can help identify their need, their challenge, um, then as the experts, ourselves and the banks will be there to support say, okay, this is the right product to fit that need. Um, and, and using the commitment that we've made to small businesses, we're going to help them get there as low cost um, and, and as quickly as they can. Um, you know, that's one thing we, we appreciate. They don't necessarily have cash flow lying around to move, um, uh, you know, all of the infrastructure of their business and to, to go digital. Um, and that's one area we will pull through with the banks to support them. I wanted to pick up on something you said almost in your first answer where you were talking about female entrepreneurs. Arabian business, we've been uh, writing and videoing and interviewing a growing number of female entrepreneurs, and that's a real force now, I think, in the Arab world. What do you see for female entrepreneurship going forward? Some of the people that we're interviewing are saying there's literally never been a better time for a woman to start a business. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the time to start a business, I guess, is the same for any uh, male or female. Um, but it, if you think about the role that women predominantly play in the household is, is you know, the one of, of nurturing and creating that nest and making sure the kids are, um, you know, getting to school, going to school. It, it's it's typically been the woman's role to look after the home. And so and that those are the attributes that we see coming through in the way that women are running businesses and the way that they're, they, you know, providing back to those economies that they are that they are in. Um, it's, it spans for us across Middle East Africa. And in fact, the index we've done um, has, you know, great evidence of, of the women drive across many, many markets, all markets almost, um, especially coming out of out of Africa and the likes of Kenya and Tanzania, et cetera. Mm. Um, and so I would say we need more of that. Um, uh, but we need to help support all businesses to, you know, rise up and be able to compete with the larger players. Um, that is something they will continually uh, be challenged against, um, is how do I compete with the large guys when it comes to, um, you know, they can buy goods and services cheaper than I can because they have the economies of scale. Um, and so we will, we believe, see there's more formulation of, kind of marketplaces where SMEs can buy and sell um, and, and get access to, uh, you know, buying the supplies from um, on a consolidated basis. Um, but there's more coming in that space. I think it's, a, um, it's, it's an area we will see take off over the next few years. Uh, we heard something, just to pick up on that, we heard something this morning from one of the panels, which was they were talking about collaboration rather than competition. Do you see collaboration being important in the SME sector? Yeah, I think, um, you know, what banks, companies like MasterCard, definitely, um, you know, our strategy now is to partner. Um, we have a program called Start Path, which is well-renowned for accelerating the startups that are coming into the region, and there are so many of them um, across, you know, companies who are doing lending, companies who are doing uh, d digital onboarding, companies who are doing digital marketing, um, companies who can do, uh, you know, d digital QR acceptances. So there's so many of them, and it th that means that, banks and and um, companies like Moscow, we don't necessarily have to build everything from scratch. So we will start to partner more. We will start to see lots of banks partnering more to build their propositions in order to cater for all of the SME's needs um, and, and hopefully to expand from a lending environment if, if it's something outside of the bank's core 
um, understanding from a micro perspective is to partner with someone who can do that. So uh, I think it has to happen. Um, it, we just need to work through how it happens so that, you know, the product and solutions that are that are made available are, are vetted, are safe, are, um, you know, are going to, to last and are going to be, um, you know, providing the efficiency that the SMEs need. Okay. Final question. You've been very gracious with your time this morning. Um, leave us all with a smile, I'm hoping. Uh, what does the future look like for SMEs moving forward? Uh, particularly now we have the news of the vaccine as well. Obviously, we've still got some difficult trading months ahead of ourselves, but what's the big picture moving ahead for SMEs? Yeah, so I think, um, well, we've been looking at the pandemic in sort of four, this four-phase framework that um, we've been tracking against. So, you know, started with containment and then and then we went to stabilisation. Um, luckily, in this region, I think we're seeing uh, we're seeing normalisation. Um, there will be uh, moments, I think, of time where we go back to stabilising, but but definitely the the growth um, times have have started. Uh, appearing again, which means that you know people are feeling more comfortable to to go out to eat. People are feeling more comfortable to leave their homes um, and go and spend, and they can't necessarily travel right now. So that's great news from a domestic perspective. If you're a small business and you can, you now have the option to start attracting people back into your businesses, and and you you, you know you are in control of doing that. So um, I think. I think it's hopeful. Um, let, let's uh, let's say that for everyone. But we need to we need to they need to identify themselves if they are in need, and I think and and start to transform the, the way that they are doing business, so yeah. that they can take um, take advantage of the booming digital economy. Because in in our in our view, it's not going away, um, and it's just something they will need to move toward sooner than later. That's brilliant. Well. That's it for this fireside chat. Um, Virginia, thank you very much for your time. I hope our audience has found your insights as useful as I have. And uh, for our audience tuning in, join us later as well for our next session, which is on how we can use marketing to find new audiences and new customers. Virginia, once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me.